called Rice and Curry, Sri Lankan Cooking, and it was one of the notable New York Times cookbooks of last year. Um, and Skiz, wherever he is, is going to tell us a little bit about Sri Lankan cooking. Thank you, Joan. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us here this morning. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of Chef Kolu and myself that we are very honored and pleased to be presenting Sri Lankan food to you here for the first time at the CIA Worlds of Flavor Conference. And I'd like to thank, I, I, I just want to personally thank Anne McBride and Mark Furstenberg for bringing me out here. And I need to also thank the Embassy of Sri Lanka and the Sri Lanka Travel Board for sponsoring the chef's uh, travel here. Um, as, as Joan said, I, wrote, I recently published a book on Sri Lanka cuisine called Rice and Curry Sri Lanka Home Cooking. And um, I believe that Sri Lankan food is really the, one of the last undiscovered cuisines of Asia. For, for the last 27 years, the country has been kind of closed off to tourism. Not many people have gone there. So not many people know about the people or the culture of the food. All that changed in, in May 2009 when uh, you know, we defeated this notorious terrorist group. And now the island is, since that time, the island has opened up. People are streaming in from all over the world to experience the people, the culture, and the cuisine of Sri Lanka. And you know, it's very close to my heart because I grew up with this cuisine, and that's, that's why I decided to actually go back there for a year and really study the food learn how to make all the dishes that uh, I grew up with. And one of, the, one of the things that people always want to ask me is, what is the difference between Indian food and Sri Lankan food? So I'll break it down for you very simply here. First of all, I don't, I, don't, I don't really believe that there's such a thing as Indian food because India is a huge country. There's so many diverse regional foods. But uh, one of the things, one of, we, and we use the same spices as the Indians do. But one of the things that is different is uh, in a lot of Indian cuisines, they tend to, to fry the spices whole in oil. And in Sri Lanka, what we do is we take the whole spices and then we roast them to release the essential oils, and then we grind them all together into a powder or paste. Sri Lankan roasted curry powder is one of the most unique spice blends you will ever find. I've traveled all over the world, all over Asia. I've never quite found anything like it. It's a combination of coriander, cumin, fennel, clove, cardamom, black pepper, fenugreek, black mustard seeds, uh, pandanus leaf, fresh curry leaf, and we throw a little raw rice in there for texture. All of this is roasted and ground together, and uh, the result is a, is a very kind of darkish powder, which we use for the meat and the fish curries. For vegetable curries, we use a curry powder, which is just coriander, cumin, and fennel. We, we, we were a little puzzled, the chef and I were a little puzzled when we were asked to uh, present at this one-pot seminar, because to be quite frank, there are no one-pot dishes in Sri Lanka that originate in Sri Lanka. But what we do make is a wicked biryani. And as you know, biryani is a dish that's known throughout the Middle East, all the way through India, so many different variations. And um, we're, we're going to make the Sri Lankan version today. Just, just to give you a background about the dish itself, biryani, for those who don't know, is a, is, a, is a combination of rice, meat, and vegetables which are cooked together. And as I said, there's so many different variations of it. The dish can be traced back to the Mughals, uh, which was a Muslim dynasty that ruled the Indian subcontinent from early 16th to around the early 18th century. And uh, this particular dish was a, was a royal dish. It was a courtly dish, very rich, very opulent. To give you an idea, the Mughal Shah Jahan, who, who built the Taj Mahal in India, was a, was a Mughal ruler. And that, 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 that name Mughal has been corrupted into Mogul in English. So we, know, we all know what Mogul is. So this is a very rich dish. It's one of the few dishes that we use ghee in, in Sri Lanka. Because the, the main fats that we cook with in Sri Lanka are coconut milk and coconut oil. 
We don't use any animal fat. So this is one of the dishes that we use ghee, which the Indians use a lot. Today we're using butter. And uh, I'm going to stop my blabbing and kick it over to the chef here. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, so as I said, we have no one pot dish in uh, Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka cooking consists of rice and curry, and when you call it rice and curry, we have actually steamed rice or flavored rice with one protein or maybe two, three, three vegetables, samples, condiments, and also. If you have a real traditional Sri Lankan food, it's actually like a buffet. But all everything helps towards the eating of the curry. So uh, this is uh, unusual for us, as uh, Skid said, it's a uh, dish traditionally by the Muslims. And right here, we are going to uh, season it with chili. And you spike a bit of chili, that's what makes Sri Lanka Korean different. The roasted curry powder, the salt, and some sugar. We mix this all together and we dig the sides. Some people do it and they go overnight. But you can give it a perfect spot over to another that we find. And then after that, we will make uh, another sauce that is with this, uh, this is in desiccated coconut. Generally, we use fresh coconut, fresh flavored coconut, chopped tomato or tomato puree, the cashew nuts, and some natural yogurt. This, 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 is, this dish is more of a home, for home cooking, and it can also be uh, done in restaurants. So you put the coconut in. The yogurt. We're using the, the Greek yogurt, which is more like the yogurt that, that they use in India. Tomato. That's tomato puree. Yes. So I need tomato paste. Uh, you could like to use you know, fresh tomatoes with this, and of course the cashew nuts. And this again is. A uh, little Sri Lanka twist on it because in, in, in many Goryanis they use almonds. So we give it a nice uh, twist. And also I should mention that Kolu has, has worked in Portugal, Iraq, Thailand. So his, his culinary uh, knowledge is very diverse. Sorry, my knowledge with this. Then <laughs> there is not as good. But that is either Craig or Chris to come up here and help me uh, out with this. To get that plain. Uh, we have actually something about uh, curry, rice and curry in Sri Lanka. Uh, Sri Lankan curries are very spicy. And one thing which you find, which is quite romanticized in the fact that this curry is not chili hot. But it is chili hot. I remember one of my uh, travels, I was in London, and I went to an academy where they were going to take Sri Lankan chicken curry. And I was quite horrified because they put apples into it, they put raisins into it, they put all kinds of things, and no chili. So the next item is not Sri Lankan curry, because Sri Lankan curry is very, very spicy and hot. So they said they're not talking so much about it the next day and teach the class how to make a Sri Lankan chicken curry. So I took all my spices with me and I went to school and I made the real chili hot red chicken curry in the school. Needless to say that my students had lunch to shut the school down because they had never eaten such a hot dish in their life. So the curry was close to the heart. That's fine. One of the spiciest cuisines in the world. The only other hotter food I've had is in Mexico. They use a lot of habaneros. So. So uh, and this, uh, this is a dish that takes a long time to make. We're really compressing it for this presentation. But usually, it's when it's made for a, a wedding, a Muslim wedding, it's made in these huge pots. And they, they cook the, meat, the chicken and the meat together. The chicken is raw and they cook it. In this particular version, we're, we're going to pre-cook the chicken 
pre-cook the rice a little bit and then combine them together at the end. Okay. So we saw here this. Normally you would marinate the chicken for at least a couple hours so it can soak up all those nice flavors. And of course the yogurt uh, makes it uh, very tender. So just to run through this, we'll heat this uh, tea or butter. Then we add the onion and the green chili into it. So then that add the chicken and cook the chicken in some water. Then the rice, we shall, uh, the rice fall in water with basmati rice. With some heat, and we put cardamom and some cloves there. Uh, the cardamom, the cloves, the onions, and then we put the rice into it and cook it with some stock, the very rich stock. When it's cooked half day, we put them together, generally in a pot, and we put in the oven and get it to cook. Now, what well, we expect that we had for ovens those days in Sri Lanka, we used to have hot coals of butter, put the pot, and then put coals again on the heat. So that way you have the better of the next So Kolo is, so, so Kolo is he's frying up the chicken, and uh, because we're running out of time, we're just going to bring the final thing out so you can plate it. So the final product is over here. This is the oven, then the chicken and the rice. And uh, if we had no so as you said, the chicken is partially cooked, the rice is partially cooked, and then they're brought together at the end cooked in oven covered for about 30 minutes. And, these and then he's going to garnish it over here with some fried curry leaves, some fried red chilies, and some caramelized onions. Beautiful. And also you can use some uh, fresh coriander leaves. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.